And what you see here is the junk jet from Fallout 4. It has unlimited capacity, can shoot just about anything, and is fueled by your hoarding capabilities. Now I referenced this in my last video, as you just heard, but thanks to Judith, we're gonna make this happen. Hey, pin this comment. Umel. Junk jet mod now please whoever is computer wizard please. 11. Lovely. I said why the fuck not? I could be that wizard. I got the skills. I got some backgrounds and things, dealing with computers, talking to the machines. So yeah, this is the this is the journey. This is where we jet set radio this shit. We fucking we just grind it out. We just gonna and if you still have no idea what this video is about, this is going to be the devlog of me making my first Project Zomboid mod as a complete noob. We're going to speed run through this creative process with the goal of teaching you what to do and what not to do. We'll hit on everything from the ideation process, tool use, resources, development, rows, and load blocks until we see that sweet, sweet product of the junk jet in-game. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to grind it out. The first two days, we're just outlining requirements on paper just to do some research on what we want to do exactly. But this is mainly important since we have to accept three concepts before even moving forward. One, there are things we know that we know. Two, there are things we don't know that we know. And three, which is most importantly, there are things we don't know at all. So these are considered the unknown unknowns as the things we just don't know, which could just end up leading to this project ending immediately. But this is the planning necessary to prevent any of these issues. But overall, to kick this off, we, were, we pretty much used Notepad to keep track of some thoughts as we built out our requirements, a little bit of ClickUp as a productivity software just to kind of outline things, our tasks, some dates on there to keep us accountable, and a little bit of ChatGPT for that uh, sweet, sweet help that we so dearly need. But yeah, let's shrink me down. Let's fucking look at these requirements now. Nice. Now we're just gonna add this into a nice little checklist, throw some dates on there, keep ourselves accountable. And that wraps up as much planning as we're gonna do for now. So going off those known knowns and known unknowns, there are tools we're gonna need to make this happen. We know Project Zomboid is Java based, so we'll have to dust off our knowledge there and download an IDE to decompile some source code, explore some files. Then we're probably going to need Blender to make our actual 3D model and learn how to use it since that would be helpful. Also, Project Somewhere has an existing structure with mods leveraging Lua scripting. So yeah, that's another thing we'll have to try to figure out. Then there's no better way to start by just doing some research and creating that weapon template and reviewing some existing mods to help guide me along the process. And lastly, so sheer confidence in yourself that you could do it and then the rest will fall into place. As we fast forward, day two was followed by some in-game testing just to see how projectiles work. Uh, Molotovs being one of the only projectiles in the game that you can visibly see. So I actually want the ability to shoot my gun and to see the object hit the zombie. There's some a lot of math done for collision detection. We'll see if I even get that far. But overall, that's one thing I did some research on during day two. But one L I did take was following guides from about like two years ago about how to decompile the game only to realize I don't need to decompile the game. I don't need to do any of that just to build a mod. I wasted some time there on day two. But on the wins, shout out to my boy Patrick. I think he's just doing Minecraft videos right now. Um, Blackbeard and ORGN for the only three YouTubers with any context on how to actually build a mod. So they that was helpful. Appreciate y'all the goats. And lastly, we also discovered Kojima. We found his GitHub repository and he actually built his own tool for handling workshop mod templates. So all the mundane, boring things you have to go through when it comes down to building your mod, updating files, copying over into workshop directory. He built a really cool TypeScript based uh, node CLI just to handle all the file management that comes with handling a mod. So. I'll probably jump to screen to show you what's going on there. Just go read his documentation. Now on the third day, we're feeling confident, ready. We sat down, opened up VS Code, and immediately got distracted. Started playing some Rocket League, flashing stats up for those who are interested in the, in the sport. But you know what? After that was a huge monumental push in the progress we started to make. We got to work on our mod template, use some existing assets in game with a shotgun, and we're going to action on a key press. Pew pew! You see? I press reload and it goes pew pew. That's pretty big. It's like the hello world for me, so I was pretty- I was, pr I was proud of that. Oh, fuck your honeymoon, now we're at a new crossroads. We have to make the great decision. 
Do I handle all the logic of weapon reloading and removing the items from the inventory myself? Or leverage all the nice functions and templates that Project Zombie provides me in the first place? You gotta figure it out. To handle this ourselves, we have to automatically pull junk items, use it as ammo, feed it to the weapon, handle that with our key press, maybe add in some logic if a junk item is favorited so it won't select it. Then we'll need to always track our inventory, which could have some high overhead. But I don't have to worry about magazines, ammo, or recipes. On the other hand, just use the existing templates for ammunition, magazines, where I just need to figure out how to convert a junk item into ammo to fit in the magazine through a recipe, which sounds a bit more simpler. Now, which do you think would be easier? Because I tried them both. Ding, ding, ding. Yep, using the existing weapon templates for obvious reasons. Now, I had some knowledge gaps. I'm not perfect. I don't know what I'm doing. But we'll throw up some reasons on why I went with this path and what everything I went wrong with this one. So, regardless, now we're cooking. We see the path forward and we know what we got to do. But I have a trip planned to Colorado, so I had to push everything to GitHub, get my new machine ready with all the apps and tools I needed just so I could work on it in my free time. Now, did I really get anything done while I was on vacation in Colorado? Yes, I did. I took four days to figure out how to fix an issue I created for myself. But while I was struggling with that issue, in my free time, I decided to work on all the design work. One, I found a, an existing three model of a junk jet. That saves me so much time, you have no idea. I was not looking forward to making this. I have some SolidWorks experience in the past and I'd, you see, you see the edges on this junk jet? It sucks. But shout out to this guy. Because I, I took it. Congratulations, you won. Then after that came all the boring stuff like making your icons, making your images transparent for the junk jet. This was some stuff on Photoshop. You could also use GIMP if you don't want to pay for Photoshop, but... Oop, bop, wham, slam, wow. Now this shit's looking professional. Almost workshop ready. Days 11 and 12 though, we're back on track and things are functioning. Recipes, working, tooltips, added. Magazine, don't need it. Reload weapon logic, working. ChatGPT, helpful. Honestly, I was pleasantly surprised with how useful ChatGPT was during this process. I've, I threw a lot of things at it, and as my little paired programming buddy, it did pretty well. But after going back and forth, it was familiar with the product zomboid structure for the mod templates, and what were some of the functions that actually existed in game. So, wow, I was really surprised there. So, that's a W. Gun texture. Still doesn't exist. Let's do it. So Blender starts with us building off of the existing model that we found off the web. Or should I say reducing the existing model? Since overall that's a 5 megabyte model and Project Zomboid is just gonna reduce a lot of the details that we didn't even need in the first place. So we're gonna thank Blackbeard with the first lesson, reduce all of the complexities in that shape to its lowest form while still keeping the same form factor. So through that, we watched a few tutorials, figured out how to use the decimate option, and just played with our slider till we got ourselves a nice shape that still kept the overall form factor of the junk jet. Then came the mesh texture fails. After a few attempts and tutorials, we finally did an export, and it did not work out at all. We went through process of elimination, checked the model script, checked out file paths, but we did not check Blender and we were just never exporting the right in the first place. I had to uncheck everything except for the mesh, and that's all we really cared for. So this was a huge discovery, and I even tried troubleshooting and changing my export type to DirectX, which wasn't even necessary since it supports FBX files. So simple as just a toggle. We love to see it. So once we figured that out, then we were golden. We tried to do it the legit way, which includes accounting for every flat edge on your model and then painting all those individually maybe within photoshop or so after you exported your little image and then importing that in the game but my only issue is that this shape still sucks even though i got my model given to me i didn't have to go to the work and make it myself it was still a fairly complex model to begin with opposed to just a few rectangles or a square or something so i just painted it orange and we did the export the right way, and it fucking worked. I was hyped. 
And to go from orange to this beautiful texture we see today, we just ended up taking our texture overlay image and slapping on two images of the junk jet. My thought process was that everything should be covered in some one of these rust pre-apocalyptic dusty ass colors and it, it worked out so boom now the junk jet's working now the last pieces was just aligning our junk jet model with our player which was just taking some existing models seeing where they sat doing some fine tuning lots of saves and re-uploads but we finally got it it's looking good good enough to my standards now last stuff on our checklist came down to handling the distribution for how spawns work I actually ended up using a Python script just to read out all the junk item files since I wasn't going to type that shit out myself. Also, we threw in a custom sound for the uh, junk jet noise when you shoot it. It's got awful, but it kind of works. Then we got to like take a look at our requirements, maybe some of the stats for the recipes, what it takes for you to actually use it. Lastly, some bugs we'll have that we'll end up calling features and we'll ship it off. But before we could even ship anything, we still have to face the final boss, and that is collision detection. The only person in the workshop that remotely does this is the Maven Bow and Arrow mod. That's the only weapon in game that I know of that where you can actually see the projectile come out of the weapon, hit the target, and yeah, that's what we're looking to do. But replace that with some RNG roll of any inventory item we created that converted into junk for our weapon. Now, what we have to face the reality is that there is a lot of code here involved, and it's foreign. So, I did not get that far. And that's the stuff I'm going to backlog for V2 of the junk jet. So, either way, this is going to be an open source project. I'm throwing it up on my GitHub. So, if anyone is interested in pulling this, making some edits, like, have a field day. Just let me know if you're going to do anything. But overall, this has been a really fun experience going through the whole process. Hopefully you got to learn a thing or two. I'm going to put all the links of the things I've learned in the description here. And call it a day. Probably in the V2, we'll try to tackle collision detection before this video gets any longer and then figure out how this works in multiplayer. But for now, you could tell me how terrible this mod works in the workshop comments. Cheers and have a good day.